Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all attendees. Welcome to second day of our four-day BIM event. My name is Alexander Ilić. I'm an architect and senior BIM manager at Bexel Consulting Company with experience in BIM implementation and project management on international projects. For the people that are joining us for the first time today, just to give you a brief overview of the program. In the following two weeks, my colleague Mileta Pejovic and I will try to present you advanced integrated BIM workflows through a series of four online sessions. Yesterday and today we're talking about advanced 3D BIM workflows and next week my colleague will guide you through 5D and 4D functionalities. Events are streamed at our LinkedIn page and YouTube account and recordings will be available on both platforms in case you miss streaming or want to watch it again. Shortly after the session, all materials used in presentation will be available for download on Bexel user area platform. Besides this series of webinars, I'm also inviting you to register for another interesting BIM event in June. On June 22nd, we will have a webinar organized by Building Smart International, where our CEO Veljko Janic will talk about innovations and challenges in open BIM project management. If you are interested to hear about latest tendencies and achievements in open BIM, you can register on the link in description. For those attendees who haven't still tried Bexel Manager platform, we invite you to register for a free trial at our website bexelmanager.com. Here you can request 30 day free trial of Bexel Manager with full range of features for evaluation. If you are a student or a professor, you can request educational license and gain access to one year trial of our software solution. With Bexel Manager trial, you also get access to our virtual knowledge base Bexel user area. You can access it easily through our website. You can use your uh, trial license credentials to enter. And here in the materials tab, you can find a range of free educational materials, including manuals on different languages, very detailed Bexel Manager step-by-step -step workflow guide, a detailed workflow guide uh, accompanied with uh, training materials with step-by-step uh, -step explanations of every functionality in the software. Then you have video tutorials for certain functionalities of the software. You can download uh, very useful add-ins, also the ones that we were using in, in yesterday's sessions and some, that, some of these that we're going to use in today's session. Uh, you can download <coughs> very useful API scripts, which we will also use today. And you can download demo sample projects, which is basically a range of different BIM, complete BIM demo projects uh, for different types of buildings from uh, different authoring tools. A again, accompanied with a very detailed uh, exercise document, which will walk you through all the analysis performed in the model. On the next section, you can download webinar materials, including the materials from today's and, and, uh, and following these webinars. So you can exercise yourself all the workflows that were presented here. And in the last section, you can find a, a databases or classification databases for, for different world markets that are ready for import into Bexel Manager. So just before we start with the presentation, I will give you also a brief overview of today's session. Today we will continue with data enrichment process. We will demonstrate some additional applications of data enrichment using data enrichment add-in. We will see how you can enrich your model using open API scripts and how you're able to return this data from Bexel Manager back to authoring tool. Then we will go through quantity takeoff functionality. Uh, we're going to see how QTO is utilized for advanced area analysis of BIM model. And we will also talk about advanced clash detection with a focus on predefined clash templates, containment clash analysis, and clash reporting and analytics. This session series is focused on automated enterprise workflows in BIM project management, smart knowledge management, and how BIM platform can help you optimize your work, establish your procedures, and significantly improve productivity. 
If you have any questions, you can submit it to chat or comment section depending on streaming platform you're watching us on and our colleagues will try to give you an answer. At the end of the session, we will also take 10 to 15 minutes to also answer some questions live. So let's start with our today's topic. As we have mentioned at the end of the yesterday's session, today we're going to continue talking about data enrichment process. Today we're going to cover uh, some more advanced workflows of data enrichment. And for this demonstration, we're going to use this interesting early design concept BIM model of a multi-use residential commercial project. So since this is early design uh, concept uh, BIM model, we don't have very detailed design of MEP installations, but we have pretty decent architectural design and structural design model. Uh, also, there's a, a rich database of spaces, since this is an early design concept. Designers were using uh, spaces or rooms to assign a lot of different metrics of the project so they could evaluate design and change it according to BIM analysis. So basically we have this model organized in groups of works. As I said, a lot of project metrics is um, assigned to the spaces. So today we're going to see how you can utilize this these spaces in, in a best way. But for the first analysis, we're going to focus on structural works. So in early design concept, we want to make an assessment of possible reinforcement uh, quantities on this project. So for this, we want to enrich this model or specifically the structural part of this model with a new property called reinforcement. This property will specify the mass or the, the amount of reinforcement per cubic meters of concrete. Of course, those are, those are some standard values that, that should be used only for the, for the forecasts and, and, and budget, budget projections. Later in the later stages of the project, you could probably get the, the detailed information for every element from the design and then you can populate that property as well. But for this early stage, we're going to use and again, an add-in that we were using yesterday the import properties from Excel. And again, we're going to use a table, an Excel table. We're going to open it just to, to inspect it a little bit more closer. And here we're going to define again a set of properties that will serve as a rule for data enrichment. So we're going to specify category of the element, we're going to specify family of the element, and we're going to specify story name in this case. Why is this important? Well, since we have high rise building, we want to specify a different uh, reinforcement percentage for vertical elements, elements depending on the story they're placed on because they have different load bearing properties. And in the D column, we have to define the type of our property. In this case, we want to define it as numeric property because we want to use it in calculations later. So we can just close this table, click open. And we see that data is imported successfully. Here we're going to get a selection set structure, which will group the elements based on the assigned property. This could be useful as a fail check feature, since if you get an empty folder, you're going to see that with within your table, you probably miss something in the in defining your, your rules. So after we have these properties populated, we're going to try to create additional property, a calculated property, which will multiply this property that's that was added by, by data enrichment and multiply it with the volume of the 
of the element and give us approximate calculation for the amount of reinforcement for uh, for every element of this structure so we're gonna select the elements go to property new he's gonna warn us that he's gonna add property to multiple categories of elements we're gonna name it reinforcement total we're gonna place it in group general we're gonna define that its mass is gonna be displayed in kilograms and in value cell we're gonna define the function according to which our property will be calculated we're gonna click show all properties find our property our newly added property reinforcement multiply it by property volume and click OK now we should have new property added to all the elements and now we can create CBS based on this property we can select all the structural elements create new CBS called reinforcement total we're gonna find our property reinforcement total color coded click OK if we go to 3d color coded view we're gonna see all different values for this newly added calculated property that is based on the calculations from uh, from our data enrichment property and the volume of the elements so very useful feature it could be extremely useful in the later stages of the project where you need to define uh, reinforcement you're not limited to do it from the table values you can do it directly from uh, design documentation of structural design as well as we have mentioned on yesterday's session automated data enrichment in Bexel manager is not limited to use of add-ins you can also use API scripts to enrich your model with data for this example we're gonna use this well-developed model which already has integrated very detailed cost, inf cost information so in this case it's a uniform cost database uh, containing a very detailed resources definition and all the unit prices are defined based on the resources and productivity rates and we have very detailed schedules integrated in this model what we want to achieve is we want to add information to every model element about the cost of the resources of this element and about the week and the month where the first activity on this element was started for this we can use any of the available schedules that we have on this project so we have a plan schedule and we have actual schedule you're gonna hear more about scheduling and and cost information on the following two sessions but right now we're gonna just use this information to go through the very advanced workflow for, for data enrichment so as I said we have detailed information about the start dates and end dates of the activities or, that are linked to all the elements on the model we have very detailed information about the cost and cost of resources for every element what we have to do is we just have to add properties to every element that will include this information how we're gonna do this we're gonna just go to the manage tab and API console we're gonna open a script that's called schedule cost and date script let's just double click to activate it this script as all the exercise materials as I mentioned are available on Bexel user area in webinar session and in corresponding sessions for the scripts and, and uh, 
and add-ins, including the sample models as well. So the script will just add the additional properties to this uh, model, which will be uh, placed in, in a, in a backsell uh, property set. And we're going to include, as I said, the price for resources for every element, as well as start date and finish date of the week and month in which first activity on certain element was started or completed. So we're going to just execute the script and wait for it to, to execute successfully. Close the API console and we can test it on one of the elements. And here we can see the new properties. So we see equipment cost, finish date month, finish date week, labor cost, material cost, start date month and start date week. And we have this set of properties assigned to every model element. So how this information can be useful for us? Okay, we're going to demonstrate just a few possible applications of this. The first one is uh, let's try to make a new custom breakdown structure that will organize model elements by the weeks of construction regarding the first activity started on this uh, on every element. So we're going to just go blank custom breakdown. We're going to include all the elements of the model and name it group by weeks you selected elements and we're going to group it by one of the properties that were recently added with our api scripts so we're going to just type week so start date week let's say and we're going to just simply color code all the elements okay if we go to 3d color coded view all the elements are colored based on the week in which first activity on this model was executed because this is an actual schedule these are the real dates for all the data where the progress is entered and of course forecast or plan dates for all the data that are after after uh, last enter date Let's just see what is behind the logic of this data set. So if we turn off all the elements and just start with the first week. So in this case, the weeks are named by the year and the month and then the number of week in that month. So it's easier for you to navigate through the, the execution of the project. So these tasks were, were started in the first week. This is the second week the third, the fourth week on the first month of the project, then the fifth week, and then we started with the second month and the first week of second month and going ahead. So you can basically see in this case an actual data of uh, uh, an, an actual dynamics of project execution or if it's a planned schedule you're, you can basically see a look ahead plan for your project so you can easily see what is planned in which in which time of construction but we were using pretty wide range of properties so we can probably utilize it in some additional ways so let's create another custom breakdown again we're gonna use it all the elements in the model, we're going to name it group by months. You selected elements, group by property, start date month, click color coding, and we're going to get a new CBS. And again, the same as with the weeks we can just see month by month execution of this project 
or the planned execution in case you're using planned schedule. So from the foundation, superstructure, floor by floor, all groups of activities together, or we can go to selection sets, find the sources, and let's say isolate only structural elements and go and see how the structural elements, structural works were executed every month. Of course, if it's easier to us, we can also select these elements and create additional CBS that will use only selected elements. Months structural and group by the same property. color code it again and it's even easier to track certain type of works so this is how it was executed so pretty clear and pretty helpful for your for planning of your construction site of your let's say material procurement of your labor force planning and in general managing the, the construction site. Sorry, I just minimized the window. So we have seen how we can utilize this start date week and start date month information that was enriched in our model via API script. But we also imported very useful set of information regarding the cost or the prices of the labor material and equipment for every element how we can utilize it well we can actually organize elements by the price range and to demonstrate it let's go back to 3d view and let's go to selection sets I would like to use an MEP elements and we can select them or we can just go to custom breakdown and make even a blank selection. We can choose selection sets and then find the appropriate source. Use selected elements. We're going to say sort by price range. And let's say that we're gonna use we're gonna use property range because this is a numeric property the price and we're gonna use a let's say labor cost for these elements and we want to filter the elements by the labor cost so let's put some range borders I would propose $100 200 500 let's say 1000 and let's say 5000 US dollars if we click OK color code elements let's see what we got if we go to color coded view there it is so we have elements grouped by the labor cost so the green elements are the elements that are cheapest to install then the yellow blue and the red that are practically over 5000 us to be installed so and if you look at it it's pretty logical that here you have equipment and here these elements were modeled as as a one single long element that's because the the element price is higher and we see that smaller elements are cheaper to be executed so this is another interesting implementation of this enriched data that we populated to the model via API script so having ability to manage data layer of your model in BIM management tool is great 
but it would be even better if you can migrate or return this information back to your authoring tool and with Bexel Manager it is possible in combination with the uh, specific add-in for Autodesk Revit you're able to information that is added populated in, in any way manually or through API or through add-ins this information could be exported to Excel format and from there imported directly to the source file in Revit. So for this example, we're going to go back to 3D view, selection sets, and we're going to export the information to structural model source. All this set of information in Bexel property set. So we're going to select all the elements, go to manage properties, export selected properties. We're going to select all the categories of selected elements. We're going to uncheck all. And then we're going to just search for the properties. So we want start date month let's say start date week we want finish date month finish date week we want labor cost we want material cost and we want equipment cost so we're going to export this set of information first to excel spreadsheet and then we're going to import it to source revit file so we're going to click ok and we're going to save it as data export sample let's say and click save An add-in for export of properties back to Autodesk Revit could be found on Bexel Manager website, support window. You can just go to the download section. And here you can first find Bexel Manager Revit Publisher. So this is the add-in that exports Revit model directly to BX3 format, uh, Bexel Manager format. And then you can find Bexel Manager Properties Importer. That's the add-in that we're going to use to export properties from Bexel Manager back to our source file. So if we go to our source file and install our add-in, import properties add-in, we just have to start the add-in. We have to navigate to, the, to our Excel file data export sample we're gonna just see how this export looks like so it's an excel spreadsheet which has all the information populated it has an id of the elements and it has all the exported properties so the importer for for revit can just read these properties and assign it to appropriate elements so we can close this Excel table and just click open. It's going to take some time to, to import all the data. Okay, our import is successfully completed. We can close the dialog box and now we can go and check some of the elements. And if we go here, we can see that we have the same inf information that was added in Bexel Manager. We can check for some other element as well. Again, we have the information that was added via API script. So as in all previous example, this is just one possible implementation of this feature. Of course, possibilities for customization, for different creative uses are limitless and 
uh, I believe that with such powerful tool you can actually improve your productivity a lot and that you can find many more interesting applications to your projects. Once again we're going back to sample project to explore one more feature that we haven't covered and that is quantity takeoff. Quantity takeoff gives you opportunity to organize and quantify model elements very quickly in a pretty similar manner as with custom breakdowns. So again you have ability to create a blank quantity takeoff or quantity takeoff from selected elements. So we're going to just quickly demonstrate simple quantity takeoff for all the elements of the model. We're going to call it QTO demo. And we're going to organize elements by category and then by family. We're going to add count. We're going to add quantity area. And we can add additional quantity volume. We can choose to color code on any level of the QTO. Click OK and then we can have all our elements organized in a certain way. We can go to the 3D color coded view and choose quantity takeoff as the basis for our color coding instead of custom breakdown and we can visualize quantity takeoff. Again as with the CBS you're able to save the templates and to transfer it to another project so we can save the template QTO template click save we can go and transfer it to another project we can go to quantity takeoff create new quantity takeoff and again in the similar manner as with the CBS you just choose your template, click OK and you can get it. If we go to color coded view, use quantity takeoff as the basis for the coloring, we're going to have the same colors as in the sample project. And we're going to quickly demonstrate another application of the QTO transfer. Back on the sample model, we're going to create QTO that will sort all the elements by uniform code and it's gonna use uniform coding logic to sort them into groups of works. So we're gonna just import the predefined template for uniform coding that will actually by substring organize model elements into groups of works according to the uniform classification. It has already defined color coding. If we click OK, we're going to get QTO based on the uniform code. Once we have defined this, we also have ability to export QTO to Excel, so we can just use export we can choose option style report that will give us opportunity to get the screenshots for every single quantity takeoff item. So we can just browse, save here, click export. The export is completed. We can open the QTO report and see how it looks like. So basically every quantity takeoff item is presented in the form of screenshot. You have quantity, you have the code, so everything is available here. So you also have flat table, breakdown structure and breakdown structure by elements so you can organize your data in any way it suits you the best. With the new Bexel Manager release, we also got one 
really interesting new feature related to QTO that I want to demonstrate to you today. And it is opportunity to export your QTO for area analysis directly to Power BI. We're going to demonstrate this feature on this model, which has very rich spaces database. So if we go to building explorer and isolate spaces, we can go to 3D view. We can see that we have pretty detailed spatial structure for this model. In order to create new quantity takeoff, we're going to go to quantity takeoff module and create new quantity takeoff for the category spaces. We're going to call it area analysis and we're going to import the QTO template for the area analysis. It's going to be available for download after this session. So we see that this QTO template actually sorts these space elements according to certain set of properties. We click OK and we have created our QTO. Now we just have to export this QTO to a specific location in a Bexel Manager in a Bexel Manager directory. So we're gonna click export. The export is completed. We're going to open Area Analysis Power BI template. So first we get an empty template, so we have to refresh data to get all the latest information from the QT analysis that we have just created and exported to the to Bexel directory. And there it is. So here we have very detailed analysis of all the spaces within this model. So we have, we have a flat table, we have graphs that gives us total area and volume by floor. It gives you this analysis, compare, uh, comparison analysis of the areas within the model. You can see the rooms with area greater than 300 meters square, rooms and in areas that are between 100 and 300 and so on. And again, as with other Power BI reports that are available, you're able to actually filter selection by spaces name. So you can see for the bedrooms, what are the areas per floor. You can see statistics and charts, very practical feature for area analysis of your model. Another interesting fact with this specific model is that besides the basic space name as the name by the function, if it is a bathroom or kitchen or living room, we also have additional property that is named space type, which actually defines the type of the apartment or the type of commercial space in the building. So we can make CBS for spaces and organize it by this property space type we can color code it again we're gonna make it named space type and click OK if we go to 3d color coded view we're gonna see very detailed analysis of the structure of this residential commercial building so we can see different types of apartments we can see commercial areas communications storage areas service areas and so on what is also interesting is that we can quickly create an area analysis and export it to power bi in a pretty similar manner as with this this one so we're going to just create new blank quantity takeoff again we're going to use the category space We're going to name it area analysis type. 
and we're going to import template so the only difference in this template is that instead of grouping elements by the property name we're going to group it by the property space type we're going to click OK and export it we're going to open Power BI template so as in previous example, we're going to get first empty dashboard. We have to synchronize data with the latest, latest analysis. And now we have a detailed analysis based on this new property. So it's not based on the property name of the spaces, but spaces type. So we're able, for instance, to compare different types of apartments to see the difference in their structure, to see the difference in their distribution on the building, to see how they compare to each other regarding the, regarding the total area, regarding the volume. So very useful feature for spatial analysis. We can see the total area of selected elements or of complete building. We can see the total area of selected spaces or complete building. We can see the rooms count, number of levels, and all other relevant data. We're going back to sample project to demonstrate another interesting workflow of exchanging selection sets, custom breakdowns, quantity takeoffs, and clash detection analysis from one project to another. So by using exchange, function user is able to export all this relevant data at once besides all of these options user also has opportunity to exchange documents scenes and animations textures building stories scene setup methodologies zones creation templates schedules cost classifications and cost versions these additional workflows will be explained in the following sessions during next week. For now, we're going to exercise export of the 3D BIM analysis that are presented first two days of the session. So if we click next, we're now choosing which selection sets we're going to export. We're doing the same for the custom breakdown structures, for quantity takeoff analysis, and for the clash jobs. In our example, we're going to check all the relevant analysis we're going to save the data project exchange data and click save and now we're going to our second project a high-rise building where we're going to transfer all the information that was exported from the sample project. So the process is pretty similar. You're going to exchange, import. We're going to navigate to our exchange file. Click open. Here, we can just leave it and ignore because the models are not matching anyway check which type of analysis we want to import from our sample project click OK and import is succeeded and if we go back to project we can see that right now we have all the selection sets we have all the custom breakdowns so we can go to the 3d color coded view we can isolate elements and we can see the same CBS structure as in the source file. We can see the same QTO analysis. If we go and check it as a quantity takeoff colors, show all the elements, it's working in the same manner as in a, as in a sample project. If we go to selection set, we have the same groups of works, the same clash predefined selection sets, the same master format classification structure, uniformat classification structure, 
basically all analysis done in one project could be easily transferred to the next project so you can have your predefined set of BIM analysis so not only single templates for certain analysis but practically complete set of analysis and project organization rules that could be transferred from project to project so you can establish your knowledge base that could be constantly used on all your projects and now we're moving back to our sample project for one very exciting feature that is for now available only in beta version it is planned for public release somewhere in the autumn of 2021 and it is a an online viewer online viewer will allow users to view projects online and to have limited functionalities of Bexel manager on online platform users will have selection set structure as in Bexel manager user will have ability to isolate elements based on the selection set structure so it will be very easy to isolate specific type of works like in this case so you can easily select and isolate elements of certain work package like this one or like this selection set structure could be also used for exchange of progress information like in this case where user is able to isolate the elements for the certain planned period or or executed period of construction process and exchange it via online platform user will be able to see the properties of the elements with the use of selection set folder structure users will be able to control the cost classification as well so it will be very easy to identify separate groups of works like in this case substructure or superstructure interior finishes HVAC systems and similar so this viewer will extend functionalities of Bexel manager software and improve communication between stakeholders all the analysis we were previously performing today are data management analysis so they are related only to the data layer of the model but BIM quality control process also requires geometry validation this means that besides data health check of the model BIM manager has to make sure that geometry of BIM model is ready for the next project stage manual geometry control is very challenging task and except some basic checks related to proper positioning of source files and proper spatial distribution of elements by floors it is virtually impossible to be executed successfully and that is why we need an automated clash detection process when it comes to geometry validation with powerful clash detection engine Bexel manager offers hard clash detection clearance clash detection duplicate clash analysis and containment clash analysis hard clash analysis will identify all the situations where two geometrical elements collide or where there is a penetration of one element to another clearance clash is for those situations where you need to have certain free space around the, the, the certain model elements like let's say space around the pipes for the insulation uh, or servicing space for the equipment and this engine will identify any collision between this space offset area and other elements duplicate clash detection engine is used to identify duplicate elements in the model and this is something that often happens during development of BIM models and with this engine you can easily identify it and delete these duplicate elements and prevent mistakes in quantities calculation and uh, schedule simulation processes and the latest addition to our clash detection module is containment clash with this clash analysis you are able to identify which objects are placed 
within some other object. This is very useful in the situations where you use rooms or spaces as we use them for this area analysis where you can identify all the elements that are placed within certain area of your building. And today we're going to talk more about this new feature of Bexel Manager. So first we're going to go quickly through the clash detection module in Bexel Manager. Basically how it works. If you start a new job, new clash job, clash job one, you're actually able to compare or to confront groups of elements from the left and the right side. For this you can choose element sources, systems, selection sets, which is the most commonly used, work sets or other properties that are available within the model. So basically what you are doing, you are comparing or confronting one group of element with other group of element or in some cases with the same group of elements if we're talking about let's say duplicates. But if we talk about standard procedures of clash detection, they mostly rely on selection sets. Well, why is this the case? Because in most cases you compare the same groups of elements against the same groups of elements and you set the clash jobs in a certain way. So the most common workflow is actually that you prepare selection sets of the groups of elements that you want to use and we were just talking uh, yesterday and today about uh, possibilities of preparation of smart selection sets so you've seen how you're able to define your groups of selection sets based on certain rules and that you can reuse this template again and again on the new projects. So if we're talking about basics of clash detection in Bexel Manager, it relies on this process heavily. So the best approach would be that you as a company or a team have predefined set of selection sets, smart selection sets that are sorting your elements in a certain way that is uh, appropriate for clash detection. And then that you're always using this predefined template of selection sets. When you have them, you can just simply decide which type of the clashes you're going to use. Hard, hard, conservative, clearance, duplicates and containment. Uh, people often ask what is the difference between hard and hard conservative clash detection engine. The difference is that with hard conservative, the clash is also a situation where two elements are touching each other. The hard clash will only define clashes if the element has certain amount of penetration into other element, the hard conservative analysis will include also the elements that are only touching each other. Uh, also you can define the tolerance and you can choose the option exclude elements or exclude clashes within the group. So basically the classic workflow is actually to use selection sets and to prepare the clash jobs one by one. But with the new features of Bexel Manager, with the latest release, this workflow is updated with some additional possibilities. And today we're going to present it. So just to go one step back and let's try to import selection sets for clash detection. So again, we're going to just go to the add-ins. We're going to use import selection sets add-ins. We're going to navigate to the Clash folder and here we have some examples. So we have Clash selection sets for this sample project. We're going to open the spreadsheet and here we see in which way user is able to create selection set templates. So as we were using it yesterday for various uh, analysis and, and element organizations of the model. Here we are organizing our selection sets in a, in a proper manner so they could be used in clash detection analysis. So basically we're defining the selection set folders and this is basically the parent folder 01 
clash and then 00cc which is containment clash selection sets. Here we have spaces, furniture, lighting devices, plumbing fixtures, mechanical equipment and sprinklers. That means that we're gonna actually analyze for every space in the project how many elements of category furniture, lighting devices and pl plumbing fixtures there are contained within them. We also have a different categorization of architectural elements, of structural elements and MEP. And we're going to see that in the clash matrix, we're going to confront different groups of these elements and we're going to define different priority of these different analysis. So basically, once we have defined these rules and the rules could be defined easily just following the, the procedure explained in the, in the help uh, sheet. So for every possible rule, you can find the example and explanation. How it, how it should be written down. So once you define the rules, once you name properly your selection sets, we can just close the table and click open. And selection sets are successfully imported. If we open these selection sets, we can see that we again have basically three work packages as in previous uh, sorting an additional folder for the containment clash which has a division between spaces furniture lighting fixtures mechanical equipment and sprinklers for every category we also added some additional categorization or sorting by types of elements because we will have probably to control collisions between ceilings and uh, beams or between doors and walls and so on. So the traditional workflow would be to actually go to clash detection and to create jobs one by one using this clash detection selection sets. But the new advanced workflow allows us to import template for the clash detection. What this means? This means that in the same way as you can define selection sets for, for clash detection or for anything else, you can define your clash jobs. So you can have predefined clash jobs that are based on the predefined smart selection sets and clash detection analysis could be performed as a standardized procedure in a very short time for every new project in your workflow. So let's just follow how it looks like. So uh, pretty much the same straightforward workflow as with the QTOs and as with the CBS, you just import from Excel clash job list. If we open this Excel, so this is how clash matrix looks like. In the first column, you're defining the job name. The second column is uh, reserved for the left clash detection group, then right clash detection group, clash type, where you have five different values as an option, the tolerance and exclude elements within group option. So basically how we're naming, so this is up to you to define your naming convention. We organize our clashes by priority. So we have clashes, clash analysis of first priority of second and third priority, depending on the types of elements that are part of the analysis. Then we use the abbreviation for the type of the clash analysis. After that is just a, 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 an ordering number for, the, for that clash analysis. Then the tolerance and at the end are the groups of our abbreviations for the groups of elements that are part of this clash detection. When it comes to defining the groups of elements that should be confronted, it's very easy. You just need to define the path of the selection set for the group of element that you want to uh, check to say as, as you would do in a, in a user interface on the left and the right side and then you just have to define the clash type, the tolerance and if you're gonna exclude elements uh, in the same group. So very simple, very easy and very similar to the selection sets import and definition of the templates. So if we close it click save and click open. We're going to have this warning that 37 
clutch jobs have been imported successfully and if we go and check them we see that we have all of these clutch detections ready if we want to update some of them we're gonna get everything prepared in the form of uh, basically user interface uh, that we are used to in uh, in Bexel manager only the old values are read from the from the Excel spreadsheet so the type of clash the groups of elements the tolerance and exclude include uh, clashes within group but again it would take too much time to update every clash job separately just imagine that you have hundreds of clash analysis so we also have option to update all analysis at once so just click update all and we're gonna wait for a few seconds to get all the all 37 clash detection jobs updated it would take half a minute probably to to update 37 clashes on on a on a on a b model of such scale so if we go and choose some of these clash analysis we can go and we can expect inspect every clash separately so we can easily see what are the clashes we can see the types we can see the distance the real distance here that is within the tolerance of the five centimeters in our case so we can very easily perform a huge number of analysis and we can actually find all the problematic spots within our model uh, one of the interesting new features is is a containment clash which looks like this so basically on the left side you have spaces and on the right side you have the elements that you were comparing spaces to so it is grouped by the left side so you can just go by different spaces and find the elements that are contained within it and another interesting feature is that you can also add relations what that means this means that if you select all the clashes and go right click and set relation contained in the room let's say and then you go to one of the elements you can select it so it's a right element go to relations you're gonna see added relation of this space to this contained element Later we're going to see how this can help you to sort these elements based on the spaces that they are contained in. But right now we're going to just quickly show you how you can export. Uh, right now we're going to just quickly show you how you can export uh, clash detection matrix. So you have the overview tab. Here you can see the clash detection matrix for the specific clash job or for the overview all option where you can see clash detection matrix for the whole project for all clash jobs very detailed very interesting and you have ability to export it to excel spreadsheet and another option is to export a clash report in pdf file that will also have the screenshot images for every single clash so if you export it this is just as an example to see how it looks like to export the clash report. So the export is completed. We can close the export engine. And just to briefly overview the clash report. So basically you have the type of the clashes, you have clash matrix, and you have a detailed report with all the specific details for every clash including screenshot including a map overview so such report you see this one is over 1700 pages long so this includes all 37 clash jobs at once and exporting it 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 will take some time we're now just showing the the previously exported copy in order to save the time if we talk about clashes itself, we, we can also 
group different clashes together. So we have options to group different clashes together. So you can just simply select multiple clashes like these clashes here and right click and group it can name the group and so on and what we can also do we can change the status of the clashes or the clash groups that means that we can change the status to high medium low undefined new active and so on so we can just say that this is height clash for example what we can also do we have ability to export clash statistics to Excel as well so not only the clash reporting to the PDF file you can also export it to the Excel spreadsheet so if we open the file and we're getting a detailed Excel file with all the information about every clash in the project that could be further used as the databases for different analysis in this case you also get the basic analytics pivot based on this uh, database uh, information where you have number and types of clashes per clash job as well as sum for all of these types and the last important feature about reporting in clash detection module in Bexel Manager is ability to export clash into Power BI. So you just go to the Manage tab, Power BI Export, Export to Power BI Advanced, which will prepare a set of seven different dashboards for seven different modules of Bexel Manager, including one for clash detection, which we're gonna see today. So you choose which properties are exported, which schedules are exported, which is in this case irrelevant. You define which clash jobs are going to be exported. We're going to use all of them and we're going to finish. It's going to be Power BI clash report. We're going to click save and the computer will save the Power BI report dashboard. Power BI report is complete. We can close this and open Power BI dashboard. So now we have our Power BI report. We can go to the clash detection module. And here we can see all available analytics for the clash jobs. So we can see status of clashes, we can see the categories for every clash, we can see distance, location, the building name, and all this available information that is actually from Bexel Manager software is also available here in a, I would say, more aesthetically pleasing environment more graphically pleasing environment and you can also filter it by the clash jobs so you can see statistics for a different uh, clash job analysis you can define the clash distance you can see the number of clashes per clash jobs you know. so you can see all different statistics you can see it by categories so very extensive statistics and very good Power BI dashboard for presentation of the results of your model health checks. And for the end, just to demonstrate that clash detection results could be exchanged via BCF Manager as well in the same way as the data validation results. So with a simple drag and drop, you can create BCF file, save it. name it BCF clash 01 and that could be sent via any BCF supporting platform to the stakeholders 
to open in their authoring tool and to solve the sad problem. For the last five minutes of this presentation, I would like to introduce you to one really advanced workflow that actually will include import of selection sets, uh, import of uh, clash detection templates, containment clash analysis, copying relation from the clashes to, to model elements, and data enrichment with the name of room in which certain element is contained to the element and at the end we're going to just prepare a CBS based on this newly added property so it will combine three or four very advanced workflows which include new features that are added in the latest release of Bexel Manager so let's start if we want to execute clash detection analysis on this model we will have to import selection sets for clashes. So here we have clash selection sets for this model. We can open this Excel table. The table is very similar to the file that we were using for the sample model clash detection as the basis. In this case it also sorts elements into architecture and by categories into structural and only for MEP and landscape we have less categories since the model is in the early stage of development. So if we close the table and finish import of selection sets, we're going to see that all the selection sets for our clash detection are ready. The preparation of clash detection template is again the same as on the sample model so we're going to just import clash matrix from Excel we're going to check the file so in this case we only have four clash jobs and all four are related to containment clash so we're going to check containment clash for the plumbing fixtures specialty equipment, lighting devices, and furniture. It looks pretty much the same as the one that we were using for the sample project. So we're going to close the table, click open, and now we see that all four clashes have been imported successfully. And right now we only have to update all the clashes. So since we have a lot of elements to check. Clash job update will take some time. Okay, our update is completed. We can now check results. So if we click to one of the clashes, we're going to see all the elements of furniture that are contained within certain bedroom or some other space because we have a huge number of clashes here. As we can see, we have a lot of clashes and we have a lot of elements contained within it. So the next step is to select all the clashes in this clash job in particular and to set relation so we're gonna set relation contained in the room which will actually add relation to every element in this clash job it will add the relation to the room it is contained in so if we go and select right side of this clash job and if we go to properties relations we're gonna see that now we have relation to this space where this element is contained in. So the next step is to enrich this element and all the elements that were in this clash job with the name of the type of room where they are contained in. So to do that we can again select all the clashes. We're going to select right side of this clash job 
which means that we are selecting the, the contained element. We're going to go out of the clash view mode and we're going to show selected elements. So we have a lot of selected elements. We can isolate it. So all the furniture on the project is contained within some rooms. So if we select all this furniture and if we use an API script that is named element space name script, we can double click it. This script should write down the property called contained in room and it should be placed in a property group named Bexel. So if we click execute, very quickly the, the, the script is executed and if we check some of the elements and go back to properties, there it is. We have contained in room property, it's called closet. So this is placed in a, in a room that's called closet. This one is in a kitchen. So the last step is that we want to utilize this property and we want to create a CBS that will color code all the furniture on this project based on the name of the room they're contained in. So we can just go to the custom breakdowns. We can again select the furniture, create a new CBS from selected elements. We're going to call it furniture contained in use selection and we're going to just group it by property called contained in room we're going to check color coding there it is we have all the rooms that have contained elements of furniture if we go to the 3d color coded view we can definitely easily see which furniture is contained in which type of room. So again, as with the previous example, this is just one of the possible applications for this advanced workflows, but I believe that users could find many more. And that would be the last workflow demonstration for today. I just have to say that all workflows presented on the first two sessions could be performed with Bexel Engineer platform as well. Bexel Engineer is a specialized 3D BIM management solution, so it covers all workflows that we were demonstrating this week. And the only difference between Bexel Engineer and Bexel Manager is that the Bexel Manager covers also 4D and 5D functionalities. Regarding the Q&A session, I believe that my colleagues answered the majority of your questions. If we fail to give you an answer during the session, we will definitely try to leave a comment later. So follow us on social networks. Also, if you have any questions regarding implementation, you can contact our support team at supportedbexelmanager.com. Uh, also, highly resolution recordings of all sessions, including this one, will be available on our LinkedIn page and YouTube account. All exercise materials, including sample models, templates, add-ins, and scripts are available at Bexel user area. So feel free to download it and test it. And if you discover some creative new application of presented workflows, we encourage you to share it with us and to share it with the community. We believe that our industry needs transformation towards more open approach and exchanging knowledge and ideas, since that is the only way to advance. Uh, now, for the end, I will just pick up a few questions since demonstration took more time than I expected. Okay, let's see. What is the difference between selection set template and exchange of selection sets? Well, uh, selection set template is more flexible than the exchange because in selection set template you can set the rules let's say you can set selection sets for the categories that don't exist in certain models so let's say that you have a basically a database of, of certain property let's say category or uh, or classification uh, item and that you're using you know parts of this classification parts of these properties for every project with the template you can predefine the rules for all of these existing properties in your 
database and with the exchange you can only exchange the rules that are basically within the model itself so it's it's just more flexible uh, another question are power bi template reports predefined or could be modified uh, yes power bi template reports are for now predefined as a standard uh, template dashboards but of course if you have knowledge in uh, in power bi you can definitely modify them customize them and if you want you can even prepare your own customized template and our support team can help you to to just integrate this template into your Bexel Manager solution. So when you hit the export button, you're gonna get your template uh, ready and not the standard template that, that we were using. And uh, one more question. Which part of model data layer is integrated in API? Okay, this, this is a good question. As of now, users are able to access geometry, properties, buildings, categories, families, materials, uh, selection sets, systems, BOQ, schedule, and relationships on the, on the elements. So as you can see, pretty wide range of model data is exposed and again, we were able to demonstrate just a fraction of possible workflows that could be performed. So, as I said, I strongly believe that, that, that uh, the users will find many more creative and useful applications to these features. Okay, that was it from uh, questions and answers. At the end, just to remind you that we will have two more sessions next week dedicated to 4D and 5D beam features. Very interesting topic, uh, very relevant panelist, and great opportunity to learn more about this very important BIM analysis and advanced workflows. Thank you for your time and have a nice day.